In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get into macro photography on a budget. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm hoping to get some new people into macro photography by talking about how to get into macro photography on a budget. Now, hopefully a lot of people had one of these for Christmas. This is your typical camera with a kit lens bungle that people could buy for Christmas. And this one is the 80D. Okay. And it has a 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens on here. Now this is the old kit lens because if you've had one for Christmas, you most likely got the one that's got image stabilization on it. It's slightly better than this lens. Okay. And we have our subject here, which is Chewbacca. He's all set up on here, ready to go. And what I want to do is I want to demonstrate how you can get into macro photography if you are on a budget now this budget is going to range from 15 pound up to around 200 pound depending on how you want to approach it if i don't mention something in this video it's either because it doesn't work and i don't recommend it or i haven't used it and if i haven't used it i can't recommend it okay so i get asked all the time how can i start and get into macro photography and my first answer always is a set of these these are macro extension tubes and what these do is they push the lens away from the camera body thus enabling you to focus closer to your subject now these particular extension tubes have wires in them which you can see there okay these keep the contact between the lens and the camera so you're able to adjust your f-stop using your camera but before we play with those i'm going to take a picture of chewbacca with just the lens uh, the kit lens here i'm going to set my f-stop to 7.1 it's my recommended go-to f-stop if you are doing macro photography particularly if you are starting out in macro photography now the one thing that you are going to stumble across when you start using um, extension tubes and doing macro photography is lack of light so i want to show you a real world example so we've only got the video lights that are in the studio at the moment so these pictures are going to come out with camera shake and that but don't get put off because we are going to talk about flashes later on in the video but i just want to give you a real world example of what would happen if you do just start sticking extension tubes or adapters onto your camera okay so first of all let's take a shot of chewy here i'm going to set my lens to 55 mil and get as close as i can then we have a nice little picture of chewy there with his uh, nice setup background speaking of backgrounds have you checked out my macro background textures Check out the link in the description or go to my website for more information on those backgrounds. So again, getting back to macro, the very first thing I always tell people to do is go out and buy a set of macro extension tubes. Now the advantage of extension tubes is they come with three parts. I'll just show you this now. Okay. And you can vary the magnification that you're getting depending on how many tubes you put on. This enables you to get closer to your subject, thus increasing magnification. But there is a drawback. You will lose light as you get further away from the camera. So you do have to have some sort of light source. So first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to skip the 13 mil just to show you. I'm going to do the 21 mil first. Okay. And again, I've lost light, so I've got to drop my shutter speed. But you can see there how much closer we are getting. So if you want to get really close to them, say you're photographing that, you want to put all the three extension tubes on. This is 65 millimeters altogether in my um, my kit. Let's take another picture of Chewy here. And again, I've lost light again. But hopefully you'll be able to see the magnification again i'm going to talk about light in a bit so the advantage of the uh, extension tubes is they're cheap you can adjust the magnification by putting on different ones the disadvantage is you lose light when you move your lens further away from your body so you've got to compensate that with dropping your shutter speed or increasing your iso again a flash is something we're going to talk about in a bit so those are the extension tubes. Those are always my go-to answer for anyone asking, how do I get into macro photography? The next solution I would recommend for beginners with macro photography is this. This is a Rayonox DCR 250. And essentially it's like a magnifying glass for your lens. Okay. You have this little adapter here. 
So that will just clip onto the front of the lens. Let's take a picture of that now. So the advantage of the DCR250 from Rhinox is that you don't lose light when you put it on. The disadvantage is you cannot adjust the magnification. Again, if you've got a zoom lens, you can do that. But uh, generally, out of the box, the DCR250 cannot adjust its magnification. The next one I would try is a reverse ring mount adapter. Okay, this cost me about £17 off Amazon, including delivery. And essentially what it does is you want to take your lens off your camera, reverse it and put it back on. Now, if you've played with binoculars as a kid, you know, you look through the binoculars, everything's magnified. You turn it round, everything's further away. It's basically the same principle but the other way round. Everything is further away when your lens is on your camera as standard because it's a wide angle lens. When we take it off and reverse it and put it on, everything is magnified. Now to do that, we're going to screw this on. And when you're looking at this, uh, getting one of these adapters, you've got to match your filter thread for the lens you want to use to the adapter. So mine matches perfectly. It's a 58 millimeter filter thread. Again, you can use step up, step down rings if you need to adjust it to match a different lens. And it has on the front here, it has the Canon EF adapter on here. That's the mount for this camera. So if you're using a different camera, you'd use one for Sony, or if you're using one for Nikon, you get the Nikon mount. So let's take a picture with this now. Again, it's going to be blurry, but just bear with me. So again, we're getting closer, but we've lost too much light, and that's resulting in camera blur. The advantage of reverse lens adapters is that they are cheap, and you can get different lenses to fit on it, like a manual lens. The disadvantage is you lose control of your f-stop. I always ran it by using the depth of field preview button and then taking off your lens. There is also another piece of equipment that you can get that keeps the communication to your lens when it's reversed. However, I have not used that piece of equipment yet. So those are the three I would recommend you get to start with. But the one I would recommend to go with if you're brand new to macro photography is the extension tubes. So I'm going to use that now. We're going to use the extension tubes. Now again, I've spoken about how you lose light when you're using the extension tubes or any of these other methods. You lose light when you're getting closer or you're magnifying the image. So you can use one of these, but I don't recommend them. They don't punch out enough light for my liking. So I would recommend you skip that go straight to one of these. This is a Young Nura YN 562 Speedlight. It costs about 40, 50 pound off uh, eBay or Amazon. Okay, and we'll turn it on. And it's a manual speed light. And in most situations when doing macro photography, you're not going to be doing TTL or any of that. So generally, you can save yourself a little bit of money and go with a manual speed light. So I'm at one fourth power here. Um, now that we are using a speed light, I'm going to turn off auto ISO. You want to keep it at 100. I'm going to take another picture of Chewy. Okay, so you can see there just how close we can get with that setup and using a flash to light it. The problem is with the flash, it's very, very harsh. This, the lighting is harsh, the shadows are awful. So what you want to do next is get a flash diffuser. Now this is a flash diffuser from Photo Accessories, a link in the description, okay? For this example, I'm only going to use the bonnet because I think that is the best part of this flash. Just using it as an example, okay? You can use any diffuser that you want. What's going to happen now is the flash is going to flash. It's going to hit this diffuser, go through it. The light is going to be spread, made soft, and it's going to wrap around our subject. And just, it's just more pleasing. Let me demonstrate that to you. Okay, so you can see there, we've gotten a lot closer. We've got light and we've diffused it. So that would be my go-to uh, recommendation. Extension tubes, a speed light and a diffuser. Now, if you've got a little bit more in your budget, what I would do is replace this lens, because let's face it, those kit lenses are not very good, with one of these. This is a 50 millimeter f1.8. It's commonly known by its nickname of the Nifty 50. You can get these for hundred pounds. 
So it's a 1.8, so it's letting in more light when you want to focus, okay? Because again, we're going to be using 7.1 when we're doing macro, but to focus, you do need more light. And it's a prime, so it's sharper. There we go. Again, because it's 1.8, it's letting in more light so we can focus. Not when we're taking the picture, but just when we're looking for the viewfinder. That would be my go-to setup for any macro photography. But it doesn't stop there, because... We can still attach the Rhinox to the 50mm lens. There we go. So if we want to get even closer, we can use the 50mm on extension tubes with the Rhinox. Let's have a look how that looks, shall we? So we're getting just that little bit more punch in. So if you are getting desperate and you don't want to crop your images, you want to get just a little bit closer, you can combine these elements together to do that same with the reverse ring so this is a 28 millimeter uh, manual lens fantastic if you use it with the reverse ring mount adapter but you can also put it on extension tubes to get even closer so again my first recommendation would be the macro extension tubes and then get the other stuff as well because combining them together can get you different results and some of the results can be fantastic and that is all within a fraction of the budget of one of these that is my recommended go-to setup. I've used this setup for years. It was only, that was it last year that I got the um, the big lens, which yeah, it's okay, it's convenient, but uh, this setup will do the job every single time. I'll be using all this kind of equipment in the next coming year. So let me know in the description below if you want to see more detail on any one of these equipment for getting into macrophotography for a budget. Because we all have to start somewhere. We don't have to go straight to the uh, the big expensive macro lens we don't need to do that straight away we can use this budget equipment and in fact this image here i'll put it on the screen here that was actually done with this lens reverse mounted onto my eos r so again the best image i have is actually done on budget equipment but for now i will leave it there my name is Stuart wood thank you for getting to the end of this video and i'll see you on the next one and what I want to do is talk to um so the first thing I recommend is one of so the first thing and as usual I didn't get the camera ready so let's do that now the ISO what's the ISO dude Let's take another picture now. And just to note, I'll put all three on. Um, I'll talk about the advantages of... Uh, I'll talk about... Uh, and right now, my lens is shut. Right now, my f-stop is... Uh, is oh, sorry. You would put all of these extension tubes on, which in my case come to... Uh, 41, 44, 45. To the adapter so in my case I'm using a 58 millimeter thread and I can't get the bloody thing on hopefully that will be okay